everybody. Welcome to a special episode, series of Contra Thoughts. Once again, we are looking at Chapter 10 on Vody Bauckham's book, Fault Lines. And as you can tell, I've got returning guest, Jason hey. Winter. There you are, dear woke Christian. How you doing? That's man? me. Hey, mighty fun. Thanks for having me on board today, Richard. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for coming again. It's been good. Always fun. Um, I know we talked about, I don't know, Chapter, what, 4 and 5 a while back? I think so. I think it's 4 and 5. Yep. Um. <clears throat> Anything that stick out at you to begin with as we dive in? I just love the fact that in chapter 10, he makes a, he, the, the, the thesis, the overall tenor is that we are at war. And I think Christians would be well served to, to kind of take that into account. Like we are in, that's not a physical war. It's not a physical artillery, but we are, we are dealing with ideas and philosophies and, ideologies that have to be brought under the subjection of Christ. Yeah. And I think we would be well served to kind of embrace that and look at that as our, as our, yeah, I'm actually at war with this, this ideology, this thought that's exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Yeah. Um, and what, even though it sounds good, even though they put a biblical tinge on it or a veneer of biblical ideology, it still has to be subjected to Christ. And I believe if we, took that as our, you know, coming into chapter 10 and, and closing up the book, I believe we would really be well served. Like, man, we are actually at, we are at fault. We are at war. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Cause, and I think, I think a lot of people, and there's a lot of theories I have of why that is um, and why a lot of people don't engage or they engage in a you know the wrong way um but yeah that's that's something that i mean he mentions yeah the bible has a lot of wars in it there's a lot of of course there's spiritual war as well and that's predominantly what he's getting at uh of course you know ever talk to an unbeliever they always they always bring up the crusades and as if you know islam was this nice peaceful religion oh, yeah of course and they were just there and in their minding their own business towns, minding their own business and uh, not pillaging and destroying uh, and taking back the holy land quote unquote so yeah we are at war and if we if we Im embrace that or we should embrace that when we do we have a much better understanding now i would argue <clears throat> to not to know that we're at war <clears throat> but like, so like Scientologists, for example, being from California, a lot of Scientologists, it's okay. Tom Cruise, you know, everybody, right? Kirstie okay. Alley and a lot of other lower people. And they're all trying to climb that ladder. And it's, it's a war similar to even like Jehovah Witnesses and some other things where they'll be manipulative and they'll, they'll say this, but really mean that and everything. And they view it as a war as well. They actually have a very similar structure to even like Freemasonry and a bunch of other stuff. It's kind of crazy. Oh, wow. um, but all that to say, they view it as a war too. You know, we're, we're at war with this or that, but they're willing to, as you do in real war, physical war, you kill, you, you lie, you up, up, obscure the truth, you do this and that, you hide, you, you do certain things. So I would just say that as Christians, we shouldn't do that. We should still know that we can fight and we should take every thought captive, as you mentioned, and and look under and be under Christ, but not as this defense of always, well, what about this? Oh, oh I don't know. I don't know what the Bible, well, Jesus just loves people. You know, we kind of have this like really put off pas uh, posture. So anyway. So on, on page 204, almost like right in the middle, the second paragraph, this, I, I just want maybe even to leave believers with this, this book, is among many things a plea to the church. I believe we are being duped by an ideology bent on our demise, not bent on making Christianity better, not bent on um, exalting Christ or any of that matter. I, I, he's made the case that this is a different religion. Yeah. And that this ideology, if brought into the church, will be our demise. Now, granted, Christ is the um, is the guard of his church. He's the he's the one that defends us. God defends the church. So ultimately, it will be for naught that, yeah. that this ideology. However, it will cause run roughshod. And we know that because you just mentioned the Crusades. 
That was a perfect example of the church being run over by a, an ideology of Roman Catholicism that yeah. later on led to the, the what we know as the Crusades. So good, bad, or indifferent, those ideas have consequences. So the, this idea of critical race theory, woke, social justice, whatever, have consequences. Mm -hmm. And Bodhi, I believe, makes that very clear right there. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, because I, I think, yeah, even before we were recording, you mentioned Mar Margaret Sanger and how people <laughs> more melanated, melanated plus, everything's plus these days, right? Absolutely. Uh, they, and these ladies, especially ladies, are like, you know, arguing about health care right now and Roe v. Wade and all this other stuff. And it's like the woman who would d hate that you're even have alive. A woman, right. She hates that you're alive. She would hate it. Margaret Sanger was like, you said, what, top five, eight racist in the world, right? Or whatever. I, I, <laughs> like, I'm she, sure. She'd be up there, right? Because right. she was a eugenicist. Like she wanted the what human weeds. I mean, it's right. just, it's insane. <laughs> it like, is. But to hear people, they venerate her idea. Her her idea. They venerate the process that Margaret Sanger brought into the world of yeah. baby murder, and the fact that people now, especially people of my color, highly melanated people, are scraping and fighting to be able to murder their children. Yeah, like, let that let that play out, I, I, or let, listen to that. Yeah, listen to that. Like you're scraping, you're fighting, you're clamoring in order to murder babies. There, there's nothing else better. We don't have a better solution. But again, ideas have consequences, and I believe Dr. Baca makes it very clear. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, go ahead. He, no, he wants our. He, they want our demise. You're right. Uh, I think that's what. I think that kind of folds in with a lot of even just what's happening politically, locally, <clears throat> with a lot of states in certain areas pushing even critical theory um, in classrooms, you know, secular classrooms, you know, Fortune 500 companies embracing it, so on and so forth. And it's like, again, I believe it's for our destruction of the church and just the culture in general, because when it is, I mean, look at BLM, I mean, their yeah. own website. Now they don't really have it, supposedly. I haven't checked, but. He says they had it and now they don't. Of course, they've removed it, but they want to get rid of and that he talks about that later. In fact, I think it's on it's later in the chapter. Uh, 217. Yeah. 217, 18, 19. All three ladies, they're not only same sex attracted lesbians, but they also hate like a vit vitriol hatred. They, they hate people who don't look like them. They want the structure of father, mother, normal nuclear family, straight, cisgender. They want all that eradicated. Yep. And so for any Christian, I mean, especially now, like you have no business putting a little black square, or doing this or that, or in solidarity. Like if you were, if you were tricked, fine, you were tricked. I'm sorry. But, uh, uh, you know, we all get tricked. I get it. Yeah. But there's no excuse now, especially with a book like this that sold literally tens of thousands, maybe more. Uh, copies and many others as well yeah. talking about this the fruit of it there's no excuse to even remotely support uh, a, a radical organization such as this and so it's it's but they want that i think just in general because then they can come in whoever they are it doesn't really matter that they come in and say yeah you know we tried this whole self-government thing we tried capitalism and free market we tried all that that didn't work obviously now the place is burning therefore let's give this new system a go i i mean i'm convinced that that's what's trying to happen i mean you look at it in china with their one-party state and all sorts of technology that controls most of people's lives I feel like that's what people are striving for, uh, this very tiny elect that want to uh, control us. But that's and not necessarily related, though. No, I think and I think you're you're right, because I think the end goal is. At the end of the day, I believe we recognize that we do need some kind of laws. We do need some kind of systems in place to yeah. to just maintain us and keep us um, doing the right things and so forth. However, in, in this worldview, they believe that they, they know better than God, yeah. really. So at the end of the day, yeah, we, we believe in some laws. We believe in some kind of systems. And we don't want God's laws. We want yeah. our laws. We want man's laws. 
in place. And therein is the problem that that exists is like, we're going to come in and with these new laws and these new ideas that are unbiblical by any means. And they're just based upon the whims and the, the maturations of, of man. And yeah. next year, it, it's going to be something different. Two years from now, it'll be even something different than that. Yeah. So that's why we have to continue to push and continue to, for lack of a better term, fight um, for this for for first of all for critical race theory and social justice to go away but even more than that fight for god's law to be established and and maintained by faithful bible believing christians yeah yeah i love that he and he brings this up uh in 207 207 yeah um in that pair that second i guess well, second paragraph, probably the important note is that crystal, critical social justice view that the he hegemonic power in the United States of America must include, but not limited to all of the following white male, heterosexual, cisgendered, able-bodied, native born Christian. I mean, I'm guilty of all those, uh, yeah. and, especially the male one. No. And, and so, and then he goes through and then he says, you know, if white people are supposed to check their privilege, then Christians are going to be next. And I mean, let's be real here. I mean, it's, we aren't a Christian nation by any stretch um but we have lots of christians right and and mm -hmm. you know there's the arguments of we are and we aren't and how we were established well there were christians at the founding just like there's christians today and if nothing else they acknowledged human nature they acknowledged a creator they wrote in um rights for the individual and that's that's amended and that's been uh, expanded thankfully uh, over the years which has been great overall Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's all, nah, no, we don't like that. You know, the left doesn't like that. And because ultimately they think they know better than God. And um, it's it's pretty astounding. Yeah. So, I mean, if we, and I highly recommend that everybody check out the book. Um, I do believe that it's, it's worth your time to read, especially if you do something, if you're, um, if you watched the discussion I had about, Jesus and John Wayne um, by Kristen Dumas or Dumay. The the idea that you just mentioned about um, the the issues are cis, let me go back to where you said that. Um, uh, white male heterosexual cisgender able-bodied native born Christian men. Mm -hmm. That's that's her issue in the book. <laughs> I call it the the, the anti-intersectionality. Like if you're a white straight Christian man, that's that's it. That's yeah. the issue. So, I mean, and isn't that Martin, what they're fighting against? Like, it's so dumb. Like, I didn't have any choice to be born this way, right? Like, you didn't have any choice to be born your way. So if we're, you know, 50, 60, 80 years ago, you're getting prejudiced. Oh, that's bad. We need to fight for Jason. Okay, let's fight for Jason. But now let's turn it around. Let's fight against Richard because, you know, he's a he's a he's a jerk. And it's like, uh, it's white. And it's like, well, wait, what? <laughs> like, and, and that's why I believe that the, the weight of this argument is that I believe we, if we keep pushing the biblical argument that this is the anti-gospel, like I don't think it's, I don't think it's by mistake that he says, you know, critical social justice is at war with Christianity. Yeah. I think people need to really sit down and meditate on that. Think about that. Like this idea is at war with Christianity. Notice he did not say it's at war with American Christianity or yeah. white evangelicalism or whatever, whatever. Like, no, it's at war with with true Christianity. Yeah. Its goal is to divide Richard and Jason from by by any means possible. So it is at war with Christianity, not yeah. white evangelical, white supremacy, black power movement, none of that stuff. But Christianity is is the uh is the target for this um, for this war. Yeah. Um I forgot to mention it because I think it's really important. And I wrote Bob the Tomato Lies, <laughs> page 208. Um, 204, this is like a 25 page. Man, I'll tell you though, if you got, if you just for those who are watching, if you've not read the book yet, I really, like I just said, Jason, to echo Jason, read the book. It's really, really good. And I'll tell you, I mean, it's thick. It's a couple hundred pages, but it's pretty easy to read. It's not heady, right? I mean, like, yeah. 
yeah, I mean, I read most of this just even last night because it's just timing and everything. And I'm glad I did. And it just it just flew by. Like it 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 just flew by. He puts um, all the cookies on the lower shelf for sure. This is a very yeah. easy and it's also very timely. So there's a lot of stuff that happened in 2019, 2018, yeah. even 2020 that's yeah. in this book that unless you were sleeping, you were aware of. So it's like, oh yeah, I remember You're that. familiar. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um yeah, so don't wait 20 years to read this book. Anyway, right. so it's on 202, 203. And I'll tell you, <clears throat> I have to admit, I mean, I'm not a constitutional scholar by any means. Uh, and that's probably a good thing because I didn't know about this three-fifths person yep. thing. Totally blown. All the time. Yeah, I learned that now. You know, like, oh, wait, that doesn't actually say that more melanated mm -hmm. people were only three-fifths of a person if they were slave? It was just three-fifths of the overall population of slaves? <laughs> like... That's a huge difference, a massive difference. And yet Latasha, right? Yeah. And, and uh, Tisby, Jamar, and somebody else, Hill, whatever her first name is, Daniel Hill. I'll all, even roll on I'll this. quote it. Yeah, I'll he goes go. to Tanica, He goes to the Constitution. You don't have to be a very smart at all to realize, no, this is just talking about votes and legislation and House of Representatives. And yeah, and then he goes to the next page, I think it is. Uh, yeah, nine of the first 12 presidents came from southern states, all of them uh, from Virginia, except two, South and North Carolina. And so he talks about Jefferson and, you know, it kind of gets in the weeds a little bit as far as um, just kind of details. But it's good. I mean, he quotes James Lindsay, which yeah. I, I like. I've listened to some of James Lindsay's stuff. I, it's weird, though, because it's like. I don't know. It's hard because I don't that I don't in one sense, I don't feel like that's a the best argument like he's a scholar in this field right though he's young right, right. been doing it but i don't know atheists are highly deceived overall right i would argue that especially with origins and you know who god is and what how the bible came to be and so then it's kind of like how do we really use like do we really want to start picking and choosing now I, i'm thankful for him and you know fighting against it and seeing clearly the nonsense but then you have like a David Platt or a Matt Chandler or, you know, even Piper and some of these other guys. And you're like, or Tabidi and and, and and you're like, wait, how are you hook, line and sinker getting this? Yet you have the spirit. Although I'm going to go out on a, on a limb here. I'm not talking about those guys necessarily, but maybe it's very possible. Some of these guys are not actually saved. It's very possible that some of these guys don't really know the Lord. Now, I don't know about the guys I just mentioned, but. Let's be real here. I mean, there's false converts in churches. And if they're trying to still curry favor because they're a false convert, right? They don't want to get on the world's bad side, mm -hmm. right? They don't want to go to prison. I ain't going to prison for this Jesus that I don't really believe in. Right. You know, but I mean, I love Jesus. No, I, I love him. You know, I love Jesus. I love his people. But you guys need to change and you and you. And once we do this, we'll do these things. So it's very possible some of these people are actually not saved. They're deceived or deceived themselves. Uh, and so... Again, I'm not parsing that out. I'm not the salvation police, but it happens. And so oh, yeah, it's certainly. weird, though, that like a James Lindsay or, you know, and again, I love um, Thomas Sowell. The guy's like 90 and he's he's not a believer, you know, but he's got he's it, I guess it's just common grace. I don't know. But sometimes think, it's a little hard. I think Dr. Bauckham solidifies his case by by including non-Christians in the argument to show that it's not just believers. Because otherwise somebody can say, oh, well, Richard and Jason, they're drinking the, the Christian Kool-Aid, the, the yeah. Jesus juice. So, sure. oh, oh, wait, wait, you, you're quoting also. Yeah, there you go. There's no juice in there. <laughs> Water, um, no, no, no. But also now you're like, oh, wait, he didn't bring in James Lindsay and Thomas Sowell. I mean, yeah. I don't have a, now, if he's quoting them, uh, their ideas on, on the scriptures, well, then there would be a problem. But this yeah. is in their wheelhouse. A, a, a broke clock is at least right twice a day, so yeah, I can give them. I true. can give them the grace to uh, to quote them. But you know, just a just a note how this um, on page two hundred three the um, um, the three fifths compromise how how that story is still being propagated today. Just today, Chris on um, all things theology interviewed that pastor named Jermaine. Um, who said that he he treats Paul with a, a hermeneutic of suspicion? Well, he oh, yeah. quoted. He mentioned this today. He literally just did today. And and Chris tried to correct him, and he clearly had not heard 
with well, Chris said. And I'm like, this is a whole grown man. He's older than me. And he did not know this. And I'm and just just to know, like I learned this when I was in elementary school. Yeah. I learned about the three-fifths compromise, but that it did not mean that slaves were three-fifths of a person. I learned that as a child. So my question when when we're always talking about critical race theory needs to be taught, it has to be taught so people know the truth. I'm like, well, what more truth did they need? I, I was yeah. taught this. There's very little that they want to teach that I'm sorry, that's faithfully teach that we didn't already know. It's yeah. just now we want to get into the deep weeds and we want to dig into, you know, Abraham Lincoln's third grade spelling test. And we want to know, you know, who, you know, this kind of stuff that wasn't there. So then we can <clears throat> add more to it and embellish it. But it, I just thought that was interesting. Um, <clears throat> we always um, love new stuff. That's for sure. Oh yeah. We always love new stuff. Um, the let's see where'd you go to was it illinois you went to grade school i was in grade school in illinois yep okay not even that's a southern good. state yeah no i mean i was in california but i don't i don't remember that at all no i might have i wasn't a very good student in, in <laughs> you know, so. uh one of the biggest problems he says on 215 <clears throat> one of the biggest problems with anti-racism is the fact that it is law-based it condemns based on melanin and mm -hmm. although it constantly uses the words, it holds out no hope of salvation, restoration, or reconciliation. None whatsoever. Yeah. As, and I keep saying, it is the anti-gospel. Yeah. Whereas we have hope, like our animus, if, if Richard and I were divided by this, I think it's appropriate that we're divided on the screen. If we were truly divided and we had the true issue in Christ, that issue would be resolved. It would be done, done away with. And we would have hope in that. There is no hope in critical race theory. There is yeah. no hope in social justice. There's no hope in Wakanda at all. It is all continual law. And just like, man, did I did I sacrifice enough? Did I mm. put up enough social a media posts? Did I genuflect to this person? Did I step out of the way for this person? And it's, mm. it's just a continual process. It's a never knowing. I mean, it's and, and people like to say like he's wrong for calling it a religion. I'm like, listen to what you're saying. What if yeah. all those things that you're saying, that is a religion. That is yeah. a faith system. Like I'm, I'm hoping that I dotted all my eyes and crossed all my t's that the gods of social justice will accept me. Yeah. But today, oh man, I got sacrifice again. I got a new sacrifice. I got to commit. I mean, yeah. but in Christ, we don't have that. So how do how do you marry those two? You can't. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's really oil and water. They just don't mix. I mean, you might be able to shake it around for a while, but it'll separate once again. Eventually. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's that's what's so, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, three or four years ago, whatever. It's like, you know, say the statement Black Lives Matter, but not, you know, not support the organization. That was kind of common. And, you know, obviously, sure. Yeah. Duh. But like, who's saying it isn't? Right. And it's like, that's oh, well, there's question. just one instance of these police guys or there's there's these three instances over the course of five years where these young men were you know and they beat up and got shot and beat and all this junk with cops or just this bad guy it's like oh man this is terrible and the problem that most people don't have or understand christians too is the media i mean like again if 20 in the last two years year and a half whatever if you're not convinced that the media just literally lies every single day, 99% of the time throughout the day, I, I can't help you. Like they literally, I mean, they are picking and choosing what they cover, what they don't cover, mm -hmm. how they cover it. I mean, there's, you know, I was, I saw one story. It was uh, a mosque or a church. I can't remember. I think it was a mosque that caught on fire and Fox news. And I'm not really a huge fan of Fox news. There's one or two that I kind of like. But anyway, uh, Hannity, I really can't stand. But um, but uh, Tucker's kind of good. But anyway, the, Fox said something about like Texas mosque catches on fire, you know, causes unknown. And like MSNBC or, you know, Vice or somebody like that was the complete opposite. I mean, it was just literally, you know, racial animus, this hatred, blah, 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 potential hatred, this. And just putting all these seeds in your mind right away to think oh yeah those christians hate those muslims down in texas or whatever and you're like right right 
the story what this is the same story like it's literally the same event and it's completely different i mean we we can do this all day uh with how many times they've done that i mean written house obviously a good example of that uh, we can just look at we can look at arbery Arbor, Arbor, mm -hmm. like <laughs> we can look at the maxwell case in new york the, yeah the, the maxwell case we can look at the um the christmas parade yeah yeah event. um suvs gone wild up in um wisconsin we can look at um um uh juicy uh smollett in chicago i mean because remember like remember racism was so bad that you actually had to hire black guys to beat you up yeah. in order to claim a, a race car back then i mean that was pretty i mean that's pretty hard hard knocks man for a black guy that's how, that's to hire black is. guys to beat them up i mean that's pretty bad i mean race yeah. was a, a mess then but those Wearing things you very little about Say so wearing MAGA hats and bleach. Wearing but um so anyway, I, I think it's it's interesting and you make a great point. Um to that to that effect, I think we should definitely consider the news is not our friend. No and not at all. I mean, not at all. Like, it's not even not at all. Turn it off, kid it, kill it. I mean, it's just if you turn it off, you're not doing yourself a disservice. No. Yeah, I mean, even even the nightly news, I remember it was maybe five or six more years ago, maybe ten even, it was I watched, it was a video again on YouTube. <laughs> Dude, it had however many, I can't remember, 10, 12, something like that. People from all over the United States, newscasters, yeah. you know, tonight at 11, da, 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 da. And they said like verbatim the same verbatim thing. Same things. And yep. it wasn't just all the NBC affiliates. It was several different affiliates. And it's like, you don't know that they're just owned by a couple different companies, right? Mm -hmm. Or do you know that? Like, you know, and like you have, not you, but just in general, like, yeah, these are all the same stuff that you buy at the grocery store. There's only a handful of big conglomerate companies that own that. And they, you know, put all the junk in it and the chemicals and the additives and colors and all this stuff. And it, they're, they're not your friend. They're not our friends. And mm -hmm. the sooner we remember and know that or know that and then remember it, the better off we are. Well, um, on, on page 223, I think he gives, um, I'm sorry, 222. He okay. gives some basic steps to i mean i think it's kind of like action steps if you will uh we must take every thought captive mm -hmm. okay then we must confront the lies and hold on to the truth on 23 we must listen with discernment mm. and we must correct them i think that that was some good marching orders if you will some good final shots like how do we properly prepare ourselves and I think Christians would be well served to take this to heart. Like as we're interacting with these people, whether I mean, whether or not a true crime was committed or whatnot, like of that nature, we still have to take every thought captive. We do have to hold fast to what's true. We do have to listen with discernment. Discernment is not a bad word. Yeah. And discernment is not just these crazy yahoos on YouTube and, and Twitter, but all Christians are are should have a level of discernment yeah and it's nothing more than just a filter that you filter news crazy guys from youtube and your friend at the water cooler mm -hmm. you, you you filter all that through and that discernment that filter should be the scriptures if you don't know what the scriptures say then that's your responsibility to learn and to, to look into it so when they say things like let justice roll down like a river first of all Find where that is. Like, that's your responsibility. You yeah. cannot, you will not be able to stand before Christ and say, God, I didn't know. I didn't know that, um, you know, pastor so-and-so or this person on the news was lying to me. I didn't know. Can I still get in? Like, no, you, you know, it's your responsibility. And I, I think that was my, my, I guess, my second takeaway from the book. Like, it is my responsibility to know these things, like to, to, ask questions there's nothing wrong with asking questions and you know say hey i don't understand how are you making this claim yeah how do you make this claim tetzel that we should have reparations for churches explain that to me how I, where do you get that from biblically this is not the bible but where do you get that from biblically yeah and ask questions and there's nothing wrong with that and people will tell you that it's bad to ask questions okay you can say that to the cows come on christ didn't say that so therefore i'm gonna keep asking questions yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's pretty, he does, he does, uh, 
get after BLM quite a bit, which is good. Yeah, the, last, the final pages of it, he, he really does give them the shacking. Yeah. Because, I mean, and that's the other thing, and we can see the Babylon Bee and some other um, oh, satire and just, just funny stuff that, like, this is a this is this is a business like and it became a very big business very quickly. Uh, I mean, I remember the even the Occupy Wall Street stuff. And um, Man, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah no, I was in I was doing jury duty in downtown Los Angeles in like 2010, maybe 2009, 2009, something like that. And um, I was walking around. I was looking for food trucks, you know, gourmet food trucks. It was yeah. old. they still kind of are in some places. And there weren't any. And it was kind of weird. I was like, okay. And I start walking. It was broad daylight, right? And I'm not really scared, although I might be at this point. Um, but there were just encampments. Not probably like there are now, far worse. But there were encampments. And there's just like dudes like strung out. And I walk by one guy and he kind of, you know, he hears me coming. And I'm just walking. I'm not, you know, in any hurry. And he kind of like loses his head up. And he's like, join us. And he bows his head back down, and I'm like, no, thanks. I just kept walking. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, that looks really, it, really tempting. I'm going to leave my wife and my small baby uh, and my jury duty and all the job and everything I got and just hang out with you losers. Like, that sounds great. <laughs> but anyway, it's a business, and that was a business. Walk, Occupy Wall Street, and, and BLM's an even bigger business. I mean, you got all these donations, and we're going to help mm -hmm. this, do that, and all this justice and causes, and you have the 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 – three ladies and others and their organizations. Oh, they're, they just moved into a, a pretty nice house. Oh, it's in Beverly Hills. Oh yeah. It's pretty, it's not, it's not very cheap to live in Beverly Hills in California. There is it like, <laughs> you know, and they're flying in jets and it's just the hypocrisy is just so thick. It's just so thick. Even if they were right and just, and they were like, yeah, that was probably not the best wise decision. You know, and they kind of came out with kind of like reluctant, like, okay, but like the whole thing is just based on a lie in general. It's based on mm -hmm. you know Marxism and just evolutionary hatred and like all this stuff that you're like, why are you celebrating this at all? Why are you supporting this? Like, it's just some Christians just confound me. I just, I don't know. I mean, it makes sense again with unbelievers. Oh, absolutely. Because everybody wants a God, right? We're And usually yeah. we're our own God until another God comes along that's a little shinier, a little bit better looking or whatever. And so we think, well... That God looks yeah, pretty nice. Yeah. And so it's like, I'll, I'll devote my time to the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. I'll, I'll sign up for BLM or this or that. Because uh, I think this is the God of deliverance, you know. And this is the definite God that will take me out of Egypt. And then that God fails and goes away. And But like with believers, it's like. Shouldn't be there. Shouldn't be guys, like guys, come on. Like, anyway. Um, I love it. Yeah, he he he's he's good. He's very direct, um, and like you said, you know, go to the scripture, have discernment, have discernment, search the Bible. Um, the last thing I've got anyway is on two twenty four. Dear reader, I know it's hard. I don't like losing friends, being called names, or being ousted from platforms any more than you do. However. You and I must love the truth more than we love our friends, our reputations, or our platforms. I'm not just suggesting that we go out and be rude and obnoxious, disrespectful. I hope that this has not been done. I hope I, ha I hope that I have not done this in these pages. Instead, I hope I have healed, heeded, excuse me, the apostles' words and encouraged you to do the same. And he reads 1 Peter 3, 13 through 17. And... Why don't, you, why don't you read first, Peter? You got that there on 224? Yeah, yeah. All right, you mind reading that real quick? Most certainly. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that you have. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good, a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, he closes there, ironically, anti-racism is also powerless against racism 
Mm-hmm. And I mean, again, it, and it's not only it's not only powerless against actual racism, but I would argue, and I think Vody does in a number of places, that it just creates new racism, right? Yeah. Now I'm supposed to look at, you know, everybody through that lens, which mm-hmm. isn't there to begin with, but now I'm supposed to love my neighbor, you know, and my outside living out in out West California, not in any sort of racist, racially, whatever, anything culture at all. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm thankful for that. And, and in one sense, probably more thankful than not, but you know, that's who I am. And so now I'm supposed to say, well, yeah, but what's Jason's real motive? Like who does he read? Who's on his bookshelf back there? You know, is he oh, yeah. really, because does he really know that he's oppressed? Because, I mean, he should know. I mean, look at his skin color. You know, and all of a sudden now it's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I could just say, Jason, hey, man, what's going on? We get to know each other. And, oh, how'd you come to know the Lord? Blah, blah, blah. We've got these interests. And, oh, you're married. you got kids. Now I'm looking. I, there's this other thing in front called melanin, right, in yeah. culture. And it's like, nope, that wasn't there. Now these guys want to shove it in there and then put it in front of my face. And everybody that looks like me and then put it back in front of your face. And I'm like, yep. Yeah, Look at that white oppressor. And you're like, I mean, he's not really oppressing me. Yes, he is. And it's like, is he? Like, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's it's a, it's a farce. Because, I mean, yeah. you're literally making... Well, first of all, it's violating the Lord's commandment to not bear false witness. If Richard hasn't done anything to me, then there is no... Richard doesn't need to apologize for anything. Yeah. And for me to say Richard has done something that, in fact, he had not done, means I'm lying. It's really that easy. Yeah. I don't know how... I don't know how people marry critical race theory and the scriptures. I'm not trying to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are. I'm not trying to do it. I clearly see that there's an error there, that there's there's false teaching there. There's no way to bring those two together. I think it's appropriate, even how the cover is with yeah. the different colors. Like there's no way to bring those together. So y'all got to do that. I don't have to. So yeah. it is very clear to me the errors of this ideology and how it is a false gospel a different religion if you don't see that okay not a problem do you not see it because you have biblically searched it out and you have found where jesus was a social justice warrior you see where um god delivered the children of israel and and said that this is going to be a perpetual thing throughout all eternity you see that you 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 see that where the lord told us to look at certain people groups with an eye of suspicion simply because of their ethnicity. You yeah. see that. You've, you've done the biblical work to come to that. Because if you have not, you have no excuse. You don't have an excuse because you should be looking. I mean, if nothing else, the fact that there are no other races yeah. should automatically cause you to pause. And yes, I'm saying that there are no other races. There is no race. Yeah. There is no racial difference between Richard and I. Let that process get your fingers in the on the comment section. But wait, we know that there's no issue between Richard and I because we're both humans. The yeah. only difference is a physical, external difference, which is the fact that I have more melanin and Richard has less. That's it. Show me yeah. right up right in the comment section. What is the difference between us? What yeah. is the difference between Richard and I? I mean, I've got a little more hair, but I just, you know, I don't want to go there. I shaved today. I shaved today. So I would look (laughs) semi-decent. So, but no, I think at the end of the day, Christians are responsible. And I really want to leave that. Maybe that'll be the end. Like we're responsible. Like we, we can't just say, oh, I was just a member. I was just a sheep. I didn't know. No, you, you know, Yeah. if you're a believer, you know that this is wrong. You know that this is an error. Just like just like the alphabet mafia. They know that they're in error. They know that. They know that they're wrong. They know what they're doing is wrong. They just choose to continue to be in rebellion. Yeah. But you can't say that you didn't know. That's the part that you just can't say, I didn't know. You can say, I choose to be in rebellion. I choose to continue to support Black Lives Matter and social justice. Okay. And that's your decision too, but you can't say you didn't know. And yeah. and those persons who are believers, you're responsible for that. Like, do the work, get it, do the work, do the biblical work to find where they're saying that this is actual real. 
Yeah. Then, then you will, the Lord will open your eyes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Getting, getting, getting it. So again, I've said this how many times, who knows? We probably all, all have. What does the text say? What get to the scripture? What yeah. does it say? Look for those things. Like you said, is there other ethnicities and, and disparities and Israel's to look at this or the church is supposed to do these things or Greek and Jew. And we're supposed to like really, you know, view these people as less and more and mm -hmm. help them. And no, you're either in Christ or you're not like, it's really that easy. It's really that easy. Um, you have any last words or you want to close on that? I'm going to close on that. I'm just going to say, Hey, Get into the book because I think that I think also our strength as believers is the fact that I'm not telling you that you have to read Vody's book yep. or um, John Harris's book or A.D. Robles's book in order to get this new secret knowledge. No, the, the scriptures have been available to you. Yep. Pick up the book. It's right here. Pick it up and read it. Like Just read the Bible. Read the scriptures. This is it. You don't got to read D'Angelo or Tisby or Mason or. Any of those other people, read, read God's book hmm. and, and get back with me. Like, read this. And I mean, as much as I want you to read Cody's book, I'm sure he wants you to read the book too. It's an excellent book. But read the scriptures and just compare what is being told to you against God's word. I believe that will that would help you significantly because I don't think enough people are actually reading the scriptures. I don't believe no. that. We've not, yeah. We've not been reading the scripture for... I would say More so. Time than we should. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's been a pleasure, brother. Uh, Always fun, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll uh, we'll do it again on something else, I'm sure. Oh, and go check out one. go check out Jason's channel if you haven't already. Dear Woke Christian on YouTube. Are you still posting on Spotify? Or are you just doing YouTube now? Man, YouTube just sucked me in. Uh, but I I I, I, I do me. need. I have some content to put up on Spotify, even on my blog. DearWorldChristian.com. Okay. But I mean, YouTube just gets all of your attention. I mean, I don't know how people maintain several different platforms, but um, yeah, I, they got to not have a normal quote unquote job. That's yeah, all yeah. I got to think. So anyway, but so no, I haven't put a whole lot up there lately, but that doesn't mean I've abandoned it. It's just Good. I just haven't done my, my due diligence. Good, brother. Well, it's been a pleasure. Always fun, my friend. Thanks I'll for having you. me. Take care. All right.